To talk about all things Xbox, we have Jeremy. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm not bad, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so how are you finding the expo today? Uh, EB Expo has just been fantastic. Uh, yeah, we've had a, um, a whole bunch of people, fan, Xbox fans, through this morning. Um, we just uh, had a keynote as well. Um, where we had a, a whole bunch of international developers join us on stage as well to talk about their upcoming games this holiday season. And just the whole reception in the audience, people coming through the booth, just absolutely fantastic. We love it. So how many times have you um, have you come to the EB Games Expo? Uh, it's funny. So I'm um, I'm in a bit of an industry veteran. So these days uh, I'm well up over 10 years of coming to EB Expo. So it's a long time, but um, it's always fun and interesting because you've always got you know the hot new thing coming out that Christmas, and so uh, you're always talking about something new and um, and the reception for people coming through the booth. It's just always fantastic. So you mentioned you've been you've been with the industry for quite a while. Um, when, when did you first get into gaming? Yeah, so uh, it started a long time ago um, uh, where I was a, a fan of games. So back from the original, I had a Amstrad CPC 464 with a tape deck that you know I used to type in the games. Uh, and went on to things like uh, owning a Vectrex and um, your early Atari. Um, so I had a love of games from very early on. And then um, somewhat fortuitously, um, there was a, I was doing some work at a retailer, World for Kids, that's no longer around anymore, um, and was sort of specialising in it was a, at the launch of N64, which is a really exciting time, you know, to see Mario 64 in 3D was pretty phenomenal and exciting. And I remember those days as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then uh, I managed to get a job with a, a, um, an independent um, games distributor at the time, a company called Roadshow Interactive, who, who uh, were quite big back then. Um, and really career went from there. So I uh, worked for a, a couple of different interactive games companies and um, a film um, company as well. Uh, but been at Xbox now uh, over 10 years in Australia and it's just fantastic that every year you've got a, a brand new um, slate of games to come to, to bring to market. You've got you know, new features on the service, new hardware to launch. So even though it's 10 years, it, it really doesn't feel like it because it's just it's so interesting every single year. Of course. Now you're the head of Xbox um, Sydney, Australia. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like having Phil Spencer, the you know the, like the mega head of yeah. Xbox? Yeah. Uh, what was it like coming, him coming here? To I mean, it, it's so exciting for us. Um, someone um, of Phil's stature in the industry um, to come to Australia to to interact with. You know, we've been telling him for a while that uh, the best Xbox fans are in Australia. And so it's great that he's, you know, he's finally been able to see that firsthand. But it really is, um, reception from the community has just been amazing. You know, Australian fans and um, the, the culture and the community that they've built really is second to none. It's a really inclusive community. You know, when people meet Phil, they're very, um, you know, they're nice, they're respectful, they're, you know, happy to see him. And they're happy to tell him how much they love Xbox. Um, and you know and what they can he can do for them to make it better so just fantastic to, to have him here and have him see the local scene but also um, I think you know, he talks to the industry well in that you know we're not about platforms we're not about you know one game versus another we're all here to celebrate an art form that we love um, and create a fun community for anyone and so it's been it's just been fantastic to have him here you, you could say uh, gaming brings everyone together pretty much yeah, it does absolutely. unite a lot yeah it? absolutely yeah. Fantastic. So, um, being part of the Xbox project, uh, could you tell us a little bit about, more about the One S? Yeah, so uh, we launched the Xbox One S, uh, we announced the E3, um, we uh, launched it in Australia in August, um, starting with a 2 terabyte version, but really there, we wanted to um, take the opportunity to take the feedback that the fans have been giving us on what they didn't like about the original console and look to for ways that we could improve that experience in their homes. So, you know, people told us they didn't like a big power brick, so we got rid of the big power brick. They said, you know, we would love it to be smaller, so we made it smaller. And then we were really interested in some of the emerging television technology that we see coming through. So, things like uh, 4K. So, we built into the box that, you know, your games will upscale um, to 4K. Um, using the, the processing power of the Xbox One S, but we put in uh, streaming 4K, so in Australia you can use Netflix to get you know, 4K. Um, but we also knew that uh, in some markets, you know, internet is challenging, you know, Australia being one of them, not everyone has a fantastic connection where they can get 4K Netflix streaming. So, so we also put in a, a 4K ultra high def disc player as well. And so there, you know, in 
Australia, it's, I know, me personally, I, I can't get enough bandwidth to download a, a 4K Netflix stream, so a 4K disc is a fantastic, fantastic option for me to show off a 4K screen and to get um, the highest resolution content. But we also added in um, high dynamic range, so that's uh, really something that adds a, a richness and a vibrancy to the colours and the contrast. Um, and is really in the, the next generation of televisions that we think offers a, a, a really immersive experience. It's almost, almost similar to the, lump, the leap that you get from standard definition to high defini definition. We think it's that material to the experience. So I've seen it on display today yeah. and it does look, it just looks amazing. It looks very sleek and clean yeah. and minimalistic almost. It is. Um, was, that, was, that all, was that all part of the design process as well, to keep it as simple as possible? Yeah, I mean we wanted to for it to signify uh, change and for people to really say, you know, we've heard your feedback and you know, this is a very different console than the last one. And so you see that in the physical design, it's white instead of black, it's significantly smaller, but it's also kept a lot of the design uh, architecture of the previous, uh, previous one in there, where it still looks like an Xbox, albeit a slightly different uh, design. So since August, what's the feedback been of the one -off? It's been absolutely remarkable. So everywhere that we've launched it, it's it's selling phenomenally well. Um, so you know, here we've just been we've been absolutely um, uh, just bowled over by the reaction from fans. Um, they're they're picking it up in you know record numbers. It's really selling fantastically well. And then they're they're really going out there buying the content to make the most of it as well. So Forza Horizon 3 just out this week, set in Australia, but one of our first titles to have high dynamic range in there as well and just the visuals you know upscale to 4k the Australian landscapes never looked so good exactly so in a way this would also uh, incentivize developers to create better games or better looking games to to fit the actual um, module itself absolutely yeah so we will certainly support with every first party title but if you look at uh, take two um, or 2k did it with NBA um, the latest NBA 2k title where they are in fact the first title to launch with high dynamic range on Xbox One and support that feature. And so we certainly will see more third parties coming on board with that as well to really deliver a, a, a more impressive visual um, upgrade for, for the titles coming down. Now uh, there's whispers of a, uh, something else coming out on the, on the market, possibly a Scorpio. Can you, tell me, can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Well there's more than whispers. We announced it at E3. Um, so Project Scorpio uh, is a, a new console in the Xbox One range of uh, consoles. So um, that'll be out uh, holiday 2017. And really it's designed to, um, to give the next level, that next leap of power. You know, true 4K native games, um, high definition VR. Um, and really you know, we're seeing it in the PC space that people are looking for uh, hardware to really make the most of the screens and the content um, that they can play and so really we wanted to make that big giant leap forward you know it's significantly more powerful than the Xbox One today but we also wanted to recognize that people shouldn't lose all of their content or all of their accessories they have to buy everything again every time we we look to keep up with technology so um, hence it's it's a new console in the Xbox One range of consoles, which includes the original Xbox One, now the Xbox One S, and Project Scorpio into next year. And all games will be forward and backward compatible. Um, your accessories will continue to work across the entire range. And we really, you know, we don't want to leave anyone behind. You should have the level of confidence that as we bring out a new console, your content and everything just comes with it. Uh, it's great as well, because then once again, we don't want to sort of force everyone to leave everything behind, and, which right. is what you mentioned before. Right. So um, any news on a release date at all? Holiday 2017. And watch this space, more, more to come. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk about Xbox. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy EB Expo. Cheers, thank you. Great. Cheers.